This is my third video on learning ESP IDF to use it with ESP32. Today will be a video about giving PWM output with ESP IDF using LEDC peripherals and applying this to control a servo. If you have already used an Arduino before or have knowledge of basic electronics, then you might already know what PWM is. This video does not provide an in-depth explanation of that topic. So I will just give a quick recap. PWM is a technique to get analog results with digital mean. It creates square wave where the signal switches between on and off periodically. This on-off pattern is controlled by changing the amount of time that the signal is high as opposed to low. The percentage of the on time per cycle is called the duty cycle, varied from zero to 100%. Changing or modulating that pulse width or duty cycle is the key behind this technique, hence the abbreviated name PWM, pulse width modulation. If you repeat this pattern for long enough, the result is as if there is a steady voltage between zero and VCC, creating a pseudo analog output. This output can be used for controlling motor speed, brightness of LED or audio amplification, and much more. For example, to set the brightness of an LED at only 25% of its maximum brightness. You can achieve this task by controlling the LED with a PWM output where the duty cycle is 25%. Now let's look at how the ESP32 provides PWM support. There are LED control or LEDC peripheral and motor control pulse width modulator or MCPWM for short, but we will only work with the former for now. The LEDC peripheral has two groups of eight channels each. One group operates in high speed mode, which means that the duty cycle is updated automatically without CPU involvement. The other operates in low speed mode, which means that the user must specify the change in duty cycle by using software or calling the LEDC API. This consumes CPU resources. Note that each group of channels is able to use different clock sources. Before we see the API for LEDC, I wanna clarify some concepts. Let's talk about timer first. There are four distinct timers and each one counts up until it reaches a maximum value then reset. The time period between each reset is the frequency value measured in Hertz. If we specify the frequency to be 1000 Hertz, it would take one millisecond, which is one second over 1000, to count from zero to the maximal value. The maximal value can be configured by the number of bits we use, and it is called duty resolution. The choice varies from 10 to 15 bits, which gives us the following values. Coming back to the example of dimming the LED, in this scenario, we can set a PWM signal with a cycle of one second with 10 bit as the resolution. We specify the frequency to be one Hertz. If we want the duty cycle of the PWM to be a quarter of a second, we can switch the signal high for one quarter of the timer count, which is 256. This is our duty. Next, we'll discuss how we can set up our LEDC for our project using the API provided by ESPIDF. We will have to configure the timer first by specifying the speed mode, the timer, duty resolution, frequency, and clock configuration. The API is as follows. Then we can move on to the configuration of the LEDC channel. We have to add the channel, the GPIO pin we're gonna to use to output to PWM, along with the duty and interrupt trigger. Note that we can set and update our duty cycle or frequency later. Using all this knowledge, we can now control our servo. This is the circuit we are working with. We are using the common Microco Servo SG90. The brown or black wire is connected to ground, whereas the red line is connected to five volts. The orange or yellow line is connected to a GPIO pin of choice, and I'm using pin 25 in this example. This is the idea behind how to control our servo is as follows. Make sure you understand the idea before coding, and pause this if needed. To implement this in our program, the first step is to include our header file for LEDC. Inside our task function, 
we set up some variables, including the initial duty, the step, the total number of cycles, and the amount of time per iteration. Then we configure the timer to be in high speed mode with a duty resolution of 15 bits and a frequency of 50 Hertz. We then configure our channel to use GPIO 25 with interrupts disabled and the duty to be our initial duty. The timer and the speed mode we use must be the same as the timer configuration. Our while true loop is where our duty is updated. The direction variable changes its value after each time the four loops end. There are 117 iterations in total per the inner loop, and each iteration takes a little more than 10 microseconds in time as there is a delay function. We then create the task and our code here is done. As you can see after flashing, it is working as intended. And this also marks the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching, and you can support me by dropping a like, share, and subscribe. See you in my future videos.